Well, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to recap some of the trades I took on the day. Uh, not the prettiest day by any means necessary. Still ending green, uh, but that was thanks to one trade. If not for the one trade I did on BYND, it would have ended the day uh, red about, about 500 bucks, 600 bucks right around there. So uh, a little thankful for the trade I made on BYND, but you know you know how it goes. So there was uh, two trades I made on BYND. Uh, one was an options trade. One was uh, just a regular equities trade. So anyways, I hopped in 100 shares long pre-market off the VWAP. I was up about 100 bucks, down 40, up 100, then down 100. So I ended up getting long at 167 and sold out at 166.07. So lost about $93 there on that trade. And you can see the PNL there says $93 down. Um, so, you know, I, I could go into why I took this trade. I mean, we had strong momentum, daily chart looked good. We are very easily in a position to squeeze into, you know, some higher higher moves. So I just got long 100 shares off the VWAP. As you can see, I didn't go too much size, partially because it was pre-market, so I wasn't gonna go heavy on the shares. Uh, once the formation started to break down pre-market, I knew we were probably heading for a red move, so I took it off. Uh, my next trade on it was actually a short trade right here at the top. Um, you can't see it with these little bubbles because the show trades thing does not work for options trades on Thinkorswim. Um, so give me a second. I guess I can just move some shings over here. Um, one second. So here was the other trade there with, uh, with BYND. You can see I made $737 down here. Uh, this is with an options trade on BYND. So you can see I lost my 93 from equities and then I had uh, uh, $830 profit on the options trade. So the options trade really I got short right at the top here and then took it off on this really big down candle. Um, so made it about almost a thousand bucks on the trade close to it was like 830 bucks. Uh, so decent trade there. Roku uh, traded uh, pretty poorly. So we'll jump into that one. Um, so I did two trades on this. Second trade was okay. First trade, um, you know, it was okay. So I really wanted to be long on it today. I liked the long setup initially. Uh, clearly you can see that failed. Uh, but I hesitated on getting in on this first one minute candle. Usually I don't trade the first one minute candle, but I've been comfortable trading Roku over the past week, both short and long. So I've been building more confidence trading this right out of the gates, uh, understanding its typical move. So uh, anyways, I hesitated on this candle. I should have been getting in around like 94.20, but I hesitated and it popped up to like 94.60 or so. And then I jumped in and I got filled at 94.74. So I basically got filled right at the top of that candle from hesitating a bit. Um, if I didn't hesitate, though it wouldn't have been the best trade, I would have been able to manage the trade better, right? So, so from time and time again, you will get into trades that just don't work. But if you have things like hesitation, right? So if you take a trade that's not going to work, but you don't know if it's going to work for sure because you can't see the future. So you take a trade. And even though uh, the trade doesn't work in your favor and it was a poor trade at, in the end, by hesitating, right? you end up getting a worse entry, which then means it makes it harder to manage a trade that's already not a good trade, right? So anyways, I end up taking the trade off at uh, 94.34, so I lose about 30 or so cents on the trade, 40 cents uh, for a loss of 400 on that particular trade. Uh, then I end up getting long on this one down here. Uh, there was some support here. Um, you know, if we went back, you'll just see it. There's some support, right? So. I got it on a little bit of a support bounce, 1,000 shares long at 92.37. We pop up a little bit, we pop up again, and then it gets sold into really hard, breaks support, then it reverses, and I end up selling out on relatively close to the top here at 92.66 on that move. Um, so it was an okay trade, not as good as I would you know, hope for more, but we take what we can get. Ended up resulting in about a $300 win, which brought me down to a total loss on Roku for the day of about 100 bucks, $111. So many here will ask, maybe in the comments, they go, 
hey Connor, so I see you entered for a bounce down here at 1000, but it broke support, why didn't you exit, right? A lot of times uh, you would do that, right? You're long and you see it break down and you would get out. And I've done it multiple times, um, but for the average trader, they would say to themselves like, Connor, why is it that you stayed in that trade? This was a perfect example of when the stock gets run down to take out people's stop losses and then they bounce the stock back up. So there's a couple things within this trade, right? When I got long, the RSI was right here, okay? Um, and then as this broke down into a new low, the RSI did not break down into a new low, it still was trending up. So it told me that momentum was still to the upside and this was probably just a fake out candle where multiple uh, traders would sell or get stopped out below this white line and then the investors or smarter investors or better investors or traders would be buying up their stop losses uh, and then run the price back up. Um, though it didn't run too much, that's a form of what we see quite often stop loss taking. So I was, a, I was comfortable holding the trade one because um, I seen the, the bullish divergence and I'm well aware of where people would probably have their stop losses. Stop losses equal liquidity providing. And again, if you need to get big orders through, you don't wanna buy as the move's going up because you'll jump the price. You wanna buy as the move's going down so you don't, you're not jumping the price. Uh, so anyways, one trade on Roku loss, one trade on Roku a win. Uh, then we also traded Lyft and uh, Tiva, we can talk about um, Lyft. You know, I normally wouldn't have bought this trade, uh, but I ended up buying in Lyft here on this candle, selling on this one for a loss of 300. I was up about 180. Typically, I would never buy this high in the move, and I've caught myself doing this a few times where you know, I see something moving and then I check the, you know, I'll go and I'll, I'll check like the daily chart or something, right? And this daily chart looked really nice, like we we're going to break and have a nice running day. So that's what allowed me to want to jump in as the move was pressing up and hold longer than I probably would with buying that high of an entry. So there's been a few scenarios where I look at the daily chart, I look at the four hour chart and the daily chart setup looks phenomenal to the point where I could buy even high in this move, and sure we might pull back, but since the daily chart's so good looking, we should form into a nice trend to the upside on the day, and well, it's caused me to take some losing trades based on that concept, and so this was another one of those those times where I hop in, look in the daily chart, and as soon as I get in, it's going well, and then, you know, it starts to pull back, I'm like, you know what, I let the daily chart trick me again into doing something I don't normally do. Um, so this is kind of a trade based off of something you don't normally do, right? Like it's it's just not something I do. Uh, it's like uh, it's like an interior designer trying to uh, install an engine on a car. If you don't normally do that, you probably shouldn't try it. Uh, it usually won't work very well. So that's one of those situations. And so cost himself 293 bucks, not cool. Uh, Tiva, I ended up uh, taking home $180 on Tiva. It wasn't an equities trade, it was a swing trade with some options. So I ended up buying Tiva, where was it? Uh, I ended up buying, yeah, I ended up buying Tiva, not this trade, that was a small little random losing trade, like a penny loss or something. Uh, but I ended up buying Tiva right here on this day. Was it this day? Or was it this day? Hmm. No, it was definitely this day. So I'm buying Tiva like right on this push uh, a few days ago, held through this day. So we bought 10 contracts long, held through this day, held through that day, and then sold into this early morning push. So this is a swing trade we did with our group, both in equities and in options. Um, that one worked out pretty well, made about 180 bucks, nothing too dramatic, uh, but made a decent amount of money on that particular trade. And so part of the reason why we took that swing trade was uh, there was a bullish divergence on, on Tiva. <clears throat> and so my options also expired today, so I wasn't willing to hold those options longer. I think the price of Tiva may still increase, but I wasn't willing to hold uh, my options because they expired today anyway, so I was just taking them all. So part of the reason we took that swing trade on Tiva is we kind of saw 
lot of green consolidation, all kind of upticking moves here. And then uh, on top of that, there was a bullish uh, bullish divergence on this, this chart here from this low to that low, from this low to this higher low. So there's a little bit of a bullish divergence. So we played the bullish divergence, favored our move, uh, and it worked out pretty well. So um, got 180 on Tiva. We're ending the day uh, up 512 bucks profit, all said and done. A um, little bit less than that after commission, but still a good, good trading day uh, nonetheless. So happy with it going into the weekend green. You really can't complain. Uh, if you guys have any questions, always feel free to put them in the comment section below. And if you're interested in joining our team, feel free to do so. Uh, we are, have all the links in the description for our chat room, course, or free groups as well. So definitely check them out. All right, guys, take care and have a good day. And I will see you guys on the next one.